You're looking at the uh, back end of a 2000 Lincoln Town car that sat in the garage for about five months without being started. And when it uh, belongs to a lady friend of mine, and when I went to start it so I could bring containers of water into our garage where this car was stored, it wouldn't start. So I went through the proximity sensor up on, on the transmission, as well as a relay fuse, uh, a fuel pump fuse, uh, fuel pump relay, as well as a fuel filter, <coughs> swapping things out and uh, didn't help any. There is a reset um, switch in the trunk of this vehicle in case you hit a, a severe bump and get into an accident. It's supposed to a disconnect and then you have to go into the trunk and hit that reset button. It's clearly marked if you know where it is or that there is one indeed for this car. But after doing all that, the car still wouldn't start. It turns over just fine. So it leads me to think that because of the age, 24 years old, that is the fuel pump. There are plenty of videos out there, but uh, some are sketchy, uh, some are better than others. Uh, one of the things um, uh, is that I brought this back from 100 miles away on my car trailer with the idea that if I had to drop the fuel tank, because snow is predicted, as you can see I've cleared off my driveway, uh, we got about 9 inches of snow on Monday. Uh, today is Wednesday, uh, the 17th of January, 2024. But anyway, I wanted to leave it on the back end of the vehicle in case I had to drop the gas tank that it would be in a position where I could reach at it or look at it a little bit easier. But the other thing was there are those, whether it's a Lincoln, um, this town car, or um, what's the other one, the Crown Vic, the fuel tank, uh, the fuel tank, fuel pump is actually located on the side of the tank, the inside side facing the differential. And the differential being your axle. And uh, versus a lot of um, vehicles have the fuel tank dropping in from directly from the top of the tank. This one's on the side, the inboard side. And it is a bear to get to. Well, the videos, only one or two actually alluded to doing this little trick. One is, if you get this up in the air, uh, to jack up the body. Um, in this case, I use a scissors jack from, uh, not from this car, but from my motorhome to raise the frame so that you can clear or have more clearance uh, for the back tire to get to uh, one connector that's for a sensor, a pressure sensor I believe it is, on top of the tank. Fortunately, the uh, tab for that connector and the connector itself pulls out from the driver's side to the passenger's side if you can depress the, the tang that's on the uh, plug. So by jacking this up in the air, you can get uh, more clearance up underneath. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this or not. Up, uh, up underneath this uh, wheel well. And up through this area right through here. Up inside. And like I said, there's other videos. But anyway, um, there is uh, the connector clips onto a connector on the, this, uh, the sensor on this tank. Right up inside there. And it's a bear to get to. So one way to, to remove it is to have an offset... Uh, uh, tang or tab uh, bent so that you can uh, depress the connector and that's exactly what I did I'll show you what I did right here From leather working tools. I had these but I decided not to do that I had a, a nice stiff wire and I put a bend about a quarter of an inch at 90 degrees and I was able to locate this tab or the top of this the underside of the body or the, the frame not the frame sorry the underside of the trunk area and on top of this little push tab right here you can see this little tab right here in the middle this one right here i was able to depress that that way i could pull the connector directly out so that'll solve this one but in order to get to this easily you have to have the car body itself up higher than the wheel well itself so you can get clearance into here plus the wire lead for this one this is the old one there is, there are two connectors to the frame, clips that you have to remove right here, and one a little bit further in. Um, and so, uh, unless you drop the tank a little bit, it is a bear to get that cable off. Fortunately, uh, this car, the underside is fairly clean. 15 millimeter uh, uh, nuts support the uh, straps that hold the gas tank in place. 
and I was able to drop that down enough to give me a little bit more clearance so that I could wiggle this wire out. Otherwise, it is pinched directly up underneath there. Well, on to the next step. And uh, I've already installed the, the new fuel pump, which was a Delphi, Delphi Technologies pump, and on to that a little bit later. Returning to the new cable coming in for, for this uh, Delphi's pump. Let's see if I can change the scale here a little bit. Um, I'm opting for not putting this, like a lot of the people, for opting for not putting this up on top of um, the gas tank so that it'll be pinched up there, but I'm going to run it alongside. This is the connector end. This is the tab that was detented on the other one. And it just clips right back into place directly straight in through here to the connector. So I will attempt to do that next. Also, this metal clip that you see right here, I'll probably reattach it to the edging of the gas tank, making sure that there's sufficient room or clearance so that when this wheel well is dropped back down again, it's not going to interfere with and, and cut off this cable. Because I'm up underneath the car, uh, video is going to be pretty lousy. These uh, bare wires are from the original connector that I cut in order to get the fuel pump out. These lead up to a plug, which I'm not sure if you see this or not up in here. Right here. This is tucked up underneath this frame member right here, up on top. I mean, on top of this. Uh, sandwiched between there and the underside of the trunk. Um canopy, whatever you want to call it, the floor. And anyway, there's a there's a grub at that. Uh, people said if you remove that, you can give you a little bit more slack in this wire. Uh, not an awful lot. What is actually holding it in place is there's a there's a, a uh, plastic uh, screw type, screw lock type, uh, push pin type, um, uh, if you want to call it a bracket, a clamp, that secures that cable to the frame. You can't get to it. So it prevents you from pulling this wire free. Uh, so I, what I'm going to be doing is putting that on. This connector is going to be on this side toward facing the differential. And I will just cover it accordingly. <clears throat> really, uh, I guess in my book, a lousy a design for doing it this way. But you can see this is the grommet that holds the connector in place. This short lead from the underside of here to where the connector is sandwiched between the underside of this floor right here the trunk floor and the top of that frame member this is where this connector is and it was secured in place probably through this see this little notch here it probably had a clip and if i knew about that probably would have slid it off it but i wasn't able to do that so uh now this is the new wire leader connector from the delphi fuel pump and uh, so I'm going to be connecting that and then, of course, dropping it back down underneath and um, uh, securing it in place probably with uh, tie wraps of, of some sort and maybe some extra um, uh, plastic tubing. I've got plenty of this in a larger diameter. Uh, we'll see you here in a minute. Uh, but I'm going to connect this from inside the trunk um, instead of up underneath the vehicle because the headroom is very, very tiny. In order to change out the fuel pump, you it's best to remove the 13 millimeter bolt securing this uh, rubber strap uh, standoff for the exhaust tailpipe, as well as the two up here in the front for holding the muffler in place. Um, I am now done putting this thing together. Make sure that you put your spring clips back over your hoses after you uh, put them back into place. Uh, but I actually, if, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, I opted for leaving this cable instead of putting it back underneath the frame member here in between there and, and the underside of the floor uh, for the trunk. Uh, the grommet with the cable coming down, I, I just brought it straight down because then it's less of a crimp on this wire connector as well. And then just fed it up underneath here and held it off with a wire tie and uh, up, up there, which is going to be more than adequate. The same with the other line. Running over to, uh, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, this line right here, the secondary line that runs to the sensor on top of the tank, instead of sandwiching it along the top of the fuel tank, and uh, I just ran along this side with a little clip from uh, Delphi Technologies holding it in place on this on this frame, and then stake it around the other side. Uh, one other thing is to make sure if you loosen up your bolts for holding the tank straps, or I mean the tank, gas tank, these gas tank straps, 
sorry about the uh, the clearance and everything else. Both this and the other side, I'd loosen those. I didn't drop the tank, but I just loosened them to give me a little bit more clearance. Make sure you tighten those back up. So now to remove the um, the jacks underneath this thing, drop it back, uh, uh, the chassis back down uh, to its lowest level, and uh, see whether or not uh, fuel's going to start this vehicle. I'm not sure if anybody's going to be able to hear this or not, but I'm putting the key in the ignition of this 2000 Lincoln Town Car. Security system is clicking on, turning on the key. Car starts. This is after putting the uh, Delphi Technologies fuel pump in it. Yahoo. And a story. It's time to go get a bite to eat. Well, after I put away my tools. And we had a good day here in Tennessee as the sun is setting. Car is running. This is the box uh, that housed the uh, Delphi Technologies new fuel pump. I actually got this through AutoZone, did a little bit of research. I am a veteran, so I can get 10% off, but AutoZone originally wanted $286 for this pump. Uh, Napa Auto wanted $239 with my 10% discount it to be a little bit less, but then you pay back on the taxes. Amazon had this for $189. It would have taken two or three days for it to be shipped to me, and with the weather conditions being what it is, I wanted to work on this car get it done. I uh, didn't want to wait. So I went to AutoZone and I said, if I bring something in to the store showing uh, what the, like Napa Auto had, would you match the price? They said, sure. So I went there, not thinking that they would do this, because I also had a printout from Amazon for the $189. So the manager of the store, very generous, ex-Marine like myself, but not that I had anything to do with it, I'm sure. But uh, he wouldn't double dip on coupons, but he gave, they matched the price from Amazon for $189 with tax. I got this for about $207. Far better than the $286 plus tax that I would have gotten if I was a consumer without doing a little bit of research. So it pays folks to check around a little bit. I'm going to do a short follow-up as to what tools are going to be used if you're going to change out a fuel pump. Uh, if it's on the ground, you're going to need... A jack to get it up off the ground, uh, jack stands to get the frame, uh, to support the frame for security. Um, let's see what else, as far as tools, uh, trouble light. You need to have a decent trouble light, if not, if you don't have access to that, you need a couple of good long lasting flashlights. This is from Harbor Freight, I used it in a pinch a couple times, but there's hardly anything that's magnetic that you can attach it to underneath this car. I use a treble light since I'm hooked to, uh, I've got 110 power close by. But anyway, tools. Um, if you have to drop the gas tank, you need a uh, 15 millimeter socket, I believe this is. Uh, 15 millimeter? Yes, 15 millimeter socket. To clear, to clear, you need actually two long extensions. I use a 3 8 drive. A uh, half inch would have been a little bit better. Fortunately, the, the nuts weren't uh, frozen. I use some... Uh, some uh, knocker or blaster, I um, forget the name of it, uh, to uh, just uh, spray on the, the shafts of the, uh, the threaded shafts so I could take the nuts off a little bit easier for the, for the straps. Um, let's see, wire cutters of some sort, some, some uh, tie wraps, some, some ties, uh, anything from 6 to um, 12 inches long works, you can cut them off. You need a combination of um, either a, a 8 millimeter open or box end wrench, small socket to speed things up 30 13 millimeter uh, this is for the nuts uh, sorry the bolts that secure the uh, front bracket for the um, exhaust uh, rubber uh, standoffs whatever that they want to call them and also for the back one for the tailpipe the rear of the vehicle uh, decent set of sockets if you got them this is a, a tool for removing. This I got probably at Napa or someplace. Could be at Advanced Auto. Uh, Harbor Freight sells these. Probably, I'm not sure about Home Depot. But you need something to go over 5 16 and 3 8 line in order to remove the fuel, fuel lines. Uh, screwdriver. A longer screwdriver if you're going to try to free up that cable the way that it's mounted up uh, between the underside of the trunk and the top of the gas tank. And... Um, that's really about it. Oh, the handy dandy. This worked out for two different things. It's just a piece of metal, stiff metal rod that I had. I bent one corner. 
to about a quarter of an inch so I could pry off the uh, connector for the rear. But this actually worked out well because I went inside the trunk removing the grommet that secures the feed wire, the short, uh, um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want to call it, the, the small uh, plug lead, you know, to uh, down to the gas tank, uh, to the fuel pump. This uh, already had a hook in it, so it just worked out well because I snaked up the uh, the uh, power you know, to the fuel pump, uh, uh, that cable connector, up through the hole in the trunk to connect to the um, um, short lead, and then I slid it back down again. So this, you need to have some sort of rod, it doesn't have to be that long, uh, but at least 12 inches long is some stiff wire, 10 gauge or something, something that's stiff. So that's it about, about it for tools.